joy is coming. Yes, joy is coming. Let's give the Lord praise in this house tonight. Amen. Let's welcome him with some worship just a moment. Thank you, Jesus, for this evening. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your people. God bless this place tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to be having a great celebration here in just a moment as we honor all of our graduates. And we're so thankful for all of our guests that have come to be with us tonight. Let's give them a Church of Pentecost welcome. Thank you for coming to be with us and to honor your graduate tonight. Before you're seated, we're going to just have a word of prayer tonight. My mom is still suffering. We have a couple of our young ladies that are in need. They've had surgery, and little Lucy is still in need of prayer. And I see Victoria here tonight. And Victoria got a call this morning. Her sister, who lives in Minnesota, passed away this morning. She'd had some health issues in the past, but was quite unexpected. And I told her, you have my permission not to be here tonight. But she came to be with your graduates, and she came to be with her church family. So, uh, Amy, would you turn around and just pray for her and, and, and maybe a couple other ladies that are back there. If you would just pray with Victoria tonight. That's a heavy burden to carry, but we know that God is faithful. Amen. I know our God is true. But we have a host of needs throughout the building. Let's just pray together right now and trust Him. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. God, we know that you will never leave us or forsake us. We know, God, in our darkest and, and most wearisome days, God, the days that, that seem to go upside down for us, we just pray right now, God, that you would bless us, strengthen us, encourage us, comfort us today, God. We need you in this house today, Jesus. We need you to cover the Anders family. We need you to bless these that, needs that we have called, our standing list. Those that are suffering, glorious here tonight, continue to put strength in their body, continue to bless. And Lord, we know that you're faithful. We know that you're true. And God, we know that you continue to pour out healing upon this place. And we just ask you right now, Lord, to minister to our needs. And we give you thanks for that tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we receive this. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise for that tonight. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's our strength. He's going to be with us in all of our days. Amen. Amen. Again, this is a beautiful congregation. Thank you for being here. You may be seated just for a moment, and we're going to ask our ushers to come. This is just a regular Wednesday night offering. Thank you for being a giving church, and I'm going to pray over the offering. I'm going to serve you, and then we're going to get right to our MC tonight. Uh, and get this uh, program started. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to give. Thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have continued to keep your hand upon this assembly, God, as we move forward, and you have allowed us to be good stewards of what you've given to us. And we pray tonight that you would again bless the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being a given church. Amen. Amen. Just a few things uh, on, the, on the agenda. We do have a dorm work day coming up. Uh, that's going to be on the 25th of this month. So any of you guys that can help us, we are continuing to work on our boys' dorm, getting it all prepared, and it's getting closer, and we are looking forward uh, to that. And tonight was a little interruption in our normal Wednesday night, but next Wednesday we'll be back to next steps, and uh, we are looking forward to, to that along with uh, Brother Holloway's teaching on Wednesday night. And this is always a packed out and lively place on Wednesday. We encourage you to come back and be with us again if you don't have a home church. This is a great place to spend your midweek because we really have a great campus here, a lively place, and we're thankful for that. What a great Mother's Day. Didn't Sister Gina do an awesome job? <laughs> Amen. I'll pay, pay for that one later. But... Uh, uh, Miss Gina, First Lady, whatever, she's uh, awesome no matter what. So uh, great, great Sunday here, and we're looking forward to what God's going to do this Sunday. This Sunday, we have a guest with us, Hector and Roxanne Soto will be with us, and it is Pentecost Sunday, amen. They will be uh, helping lead our worship team. They'll be ministering alongside of our worship team uh, this Sunday. This is Pentecost Sunday, and uh, we're going to hear a great word from God and we're going to celebrate big. Amen. The birthday of the church. Amen. Come hear the message. Come be part of it this coming Sunday. Looking forward 
to all of that. So without further ado, I need to turn this to our MC tonight. Uh, Clark, would you come and take over from here? And uh, we're excited about uh, honoring our graduates tonight. Amen. We're thankful. A record number, 18 this year. God bless. Thank you for coming out and supporting our graduates. It, it really means a lot to them and to their families to have support on this night. So thank you for being with us and coming out to support. It means a lot. And I'm excited. I have the honor and the privilege tonight to introduce you to these graduates and also tell you some of the things. I want to make a disclaimer here that I did not have anything to do with some of the things they may want you to know about them or, you know, <laughs> some of their favorite things there. Uh, just, you know, you'll, you, I guess that'll make sense in a minute. But uh, I had nothing to do with that. I just have the privilege to announce uh, our graduates and introduce you to them. So without further ado, uh, let's, let's get it started. I think DJ is going to cue up some music. All right. Our first graduate tonight is Miss Alexandra Austin. She's graduating from Grant High School, and some of her favorite things to do are powerlifting. She works at Sweet Joy Bakery. She likes to paint. Uh, one of her favorite scriptures is Isaiah 41 and 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And her future goals and plans are she wants to get a diagnostic medical sonographer and uh, she also wants you to know that she had a 4.0 GPA all four years and she was a first place state champion in her weight class in powerlifting that's awesome our next graduate tonight is Mr. Storm Boyette Storm is graduating from Mississippi College. He's got a Bachelor of Science in Biology, Medical Sciences. He's also graduating summa cum laude with a GPA of 3.9 to 4.0. Mississippi College Honors College, and he's on the president's list. Some activities and things he's involved in are the Tri Beta Biological Honor Society, student members of the American Chemistry Society, Mississippi College Pre-Dental Society, the Shalreth Men's Service Club, and Mississippi College Student Recruiters. Some of his hobbies and special interests include ceramics, volunteering at the John and Vera May Perkins Foundation. He served over 53 hours there, and he volunteered at the Jackson Free Clinic and served over 35 hours there. Um, his future plans include attending LSU School of Dentistry for a Doctor of Dental Surgery degree. His favorite verse is Proverbs 16 and 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And something he would like you to know is that he achieved on his dental admissions test score a 24, putting him in the 96th percentile. Very impressive. Our next graduate tonight is Miss Kinsley Brazel. <laughs> Kinsley is graduating from Alexandria Senior High. Some of her awards, certificates, and honors include platinum overall on work keys, mastery or advanced on all her high school LEAP exams, ULL Cypress Scholarship, commuting to LSU, and A Honor Roll. Some of the activities she's involved in include Environmental Club, FCA, Best Buddies, which is a club geared towards engaging with the special needs students, Trojan Mentors, a mentor program where upperclassmen take freshmen under their wing. And some of her hobbies and special interests include volunteer work, uh, baking, reading, listening to music, traveling, spending time with friends and family, and her future goals are to major in architecture at LSU and be actively involved in her college community. Her favorite verse is Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And something she'd like you to know is that, hey, I survived high school and made it out with all A's. Way to go, Kinsley. Our next graduate tonight is Miss Maggie Joy Burgess. She's graduating from Faith Christian Training Academy. 
And some of her awards and certificates include received the Borgard Electric Scholarship. She received the Principal Award for Academic Achievement. She received the Honor Cord for Beta Club. She was also a member of 4-H for two years. She participated in Woodman Skills Girl, Girl Cross Cut in 2023. She participated in Judging Day, which is horse judging in 22 and 2023. She also attended Vernon Parish Youth Farm Day in 22 and 23. And she played volleyball with Hope Baptist School for eight years. She was the captain for five years and was awarded MVP for three years. She was also a member of the Acadiana Juniors Travel Volleyball Team for two years and was the captain for both years. She loves to hang out with her friends and family, loves to go hunting and fishing. She has a love for photography and was the yearbook photographer for two years at Hope Baptist School. Her future plans include attending McNeese State University to major in radiology. And her favorite verse is 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Our next graduate tonight is Mr. Nathaniel Forrest Carmouche. He's graduating from Grant High School. His awards include JROTC Cougar Battalion Commander, the American Legion Award, and Knights of Columbus Award. He was also involved in band, six years of trumpet, and JROTC for four years um, as a, a Sergeant XO, then BC, is that right? Hobbies and special interests include volunteering, such as picking up garbage and cleaning up our cities. His future plans and goals are to be a music and or slash history teacher at Grant High School. His favorite verse is John 19 and 30. And something he would like you to know about him is, hey, I'm pretty cool. I love the USA. <laughs> my GPA is going up and my ACT score is at a clean 20. <laughs> Our next graduate tonight is Miss Lauren Christ. Lauren is graduating from Tioga High School. And some of her awards and certificates include LHSAA All Academic Team, Sportsmanship Award for Soccer, Platinum on Work Keys, Certificate in Six Digital Programs, EMR Certified, and 21 Hours of College Credits with Louisiana Tech. Some of her activities and organizations that she's involved in include the Lady Indian Soccer Team for three years, Student Council for two years, Student Body Treasurer for one year, Beta for three years and current president, the homecoming court for one year, infield angels for two years, freshman mentor for one year, and FCA leadership for two years. Some of her hobbies and special interests include playing tennis, reading, and hanging out with my friends. And her future plans are to attend LSUA in the fall, to receive a bachelor's in kinesiology and minor in psychology, then to LSUHS, where she will pursue a doctorate in occupational therapy. Her favorite verse is 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye that you're the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Something she'd like you to know about her is a 4.3 GPA, 26 on ACT, graduating in the top 20 of 206 students and proud member of COP since the day I was born. <clears throat> he says, this is my church where I first met Jesus and I was dedicated back to him and baptized right here. Amazing. Our next graduate tonight is Ms. Aslan Reed Durand. Aslan is graduating from Unitech Academy. She's going to college for phlebotomy slash EKG. Her activities and organizations that she's involved in include, she said, I'm currently specializing in home health care until starting clinicals in my field. And some of her special interests include spending the day at the lake with friends, Future goals include further education and work in the hospice field. Her favorite verse is Matthew 4, 16 through 17. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Something she'd like you to know about her is I would like all of my friends and family to know more than anything that I'm very proud of them. Our next graduate is Miss Ashlyn Gintz.
He's graduating from LSUA for the Bachelor's of Clinical Psychology and a minor in Communications. And some of her awards include the Mulder Circle member. She was also involved in honors. She had honors experience and the psychology club. Uh, some of her hobbies and special interests include, I love my cat, Peach, and playing piano. Uh, her future goals include pursuing a master's in general psychology at ULM. Her favorite verse is Nahum 1 and 7. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Something she'd like you to know about her is she's conducted and presented two research studies on the correlation between personality traits and behavior patterns. Pretty cool stuff. Our next graduate is Ava Reese Gintz. <laughs> Ava is graduating from Grant High School, and she was also promoted to the rank of Specialist, Distinguished Service and Band at GHS. She was the Executive Officer in JROTC, and she was recently accepted to LSUA. Some of the activities and organizations she's been involved in include being a specialist in the Army National Guard, executive officer and cadet major in JROTC, and played flute in the band for six years. Her hobbies and special interests include spending time with family and friends, thrifting, and playing with my pets. Her future goals include get through basic training in AIT, then go to LSUA and focus on fine arts. Something she'd like you to know about her is that she had a 3.8 GPA, a 20 ACT score, and a 42 on the ASVAB. Our next graduate tonight is Miss Lakin Joy Hammernick. Lakin is graduating from Alexandria Senior High School, and her awards include admission to LSU Honors College, AB Honor Roll, and Platinum on All Work Keys Test. Some of the organizations she's involved in include being a key club member for two years, active key club president, the art club for three years, an active art club leadership team, the National Honor Society for two years, Trojan TV for two years, Beta Club for one year. She was a student council representative for one year. She was a part of the Youth Volunteer Corps for one year, FCA for four years, volleyball for one year, and palm line for one year. Her hobbies and special interests include, she said, I enjoy taking naps, babysitting, volunteering in children's ministry at COP and Salt, and working at Beans and Cream. Her future plans include attending LSU Honors College in the fall to major in psychology and later get a PhD. Favorite verse is Matthew 6 and 33 through 34. And something she'd like you to know is that she graduated top 10% of the graduating class with a 28 on the ACT. Our next graduate tonight is Mr. Bailey Ray Manasco. <laughs> Bailey's graduated from Pineville High School this year, and some of his awards and certificates include TOPS Performance, ULM Merit Scholarship, AB Honor Roll, Top 100 at PHS, District Literary Rally Participant for Spanish Two Junior Year, District Literary Rally Participant and Winner for AG2 Senior Year, Highest Score Across All Districts for AG1, Letterman Sophomore Year, Most Improved Player for PHS Soccer Sophomore Year, Coaches Award for PHS Soccer Junior Year, PHS Soccer Captain Senior Year, all academic team, winner of the Veterans Day Essay Contest, hosted by the VA Medical Center and Valix Credit Union, Pineville Proud Community Award, CLEP for College Composition Modular, and qualified for district in PHS Golf. Some of the activities he's involved in, left wing and left back for competitive Cajun Rush two years, forward, right, and left wing, center back, and mid plus goalie for PHS Soccer for four years, forward and goalie for Crossroads Recreational Soccer for four years, volleyball club one year, golf for PHS one year, and I've been a part of the COP Dream Team running lights and media since I was 12. <laughs> Hobbies and special interests include social media reels for, G for COP, soccer, golf, volleyball, dodgeball, youth camps, youth retreats, traveling with friends and family, gaming, Rocket League and Fortnite to be exact, uh, help with coaching for JV teams at PHS, helping coach Red River soccer for fourth and fifth grade boys, 
reading books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and listening to podcasts about business and success and giving Bible studies to friends. His future plans and goals include staying involved in church, playing intramural sports, and having my hands in multiple areas of business, but starting at ULM with a degree in general construction management. Favorite verse is Romans 8 and 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And something he'd like you to know is that I've been a part of the Rapids Parish Talented Art Program since elementary school. I've built my own computer, and I've taken a three-hour finance investment class, plus already started an investment fund. Our next graduate is Mr. Joshua Noah. Josh is graduating from Pineville High School. He wants to go on to aviation management. He played as a, uh, on the golf team at PHS for three years. Some of his hobbies and interests include skating, driving, and golfing. Future plans, I want to serve in the U.S. Air Force and later become a commercial airline pilot. Favorite verse, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 and 9. Something he'd like you to know is that he had a 3.3 GPA. Our next graduate is Mr. Joshua Normand. Josh is graduating from Bolton High School. His awards include Pre-AP English 1 and 2, Pre-AP Algebra 1, Human Geography AP, and English 3 AP. His activities and organizations include orchestra two years, violin, yearbook and photography two years, technical theater for one year. His hobbies and special interests include media and lights in the church, listening to worship music, and traveling. His future plans include attending University of Louisiana at Lafayette for a bachelor's and a master's in architecture. His favorite verse is Romans 5 and 5, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And something he'd like you to know is that I have a 3.0 GPA and I'm in the top one fourth of my class. Our next graduate is Mr. Ethan Ryan Savage. Ethan is graduating from Grant High School, and he has a special interest in gaming and future plans, including joining the workforce. Our next graduate is Mr. Tyler James Rabelais. Tyler is graduating from Grant High School, and activities and organizations he was involved in include saxophone section leader for three years in band. His hobbies and special interests include playing different instruments, playing video games, and building Legos. His future plans are to go into the National Guard for radiology, then to go to LSUA. Favorite verse, Romans 13 and 8, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Our next graduate is Mr. Kasten Blaine Swallow. Kasten is graduating Trinity Private Christian High School and his awards include having a 3.46 GPA. His hobbies are gaming and four-wheeler riding future plans are first to obtain my real estate license while attending LC for a bachelor's in computer science and his favorite verse is Psalm 23. Something he'd like you to know is that I cut my hair for this because my mom begged me to. And our final graduate tonight is Mr. Corbin Joe Zito. Corbin is graduating from Tioga High School. He's going to pursue a business degree. Award certificates and honors include, hey, I survived a four-wheeler wreck. I missed the most days of school and a broken hip. I lose my keys the most often. 
and I use mom's debit card the most. Activities and organizations he's involved in include football for four years, and he said skip school for two out of four years. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to say that. Uh, hobbies and special interests include meeting with my mom in the kitchen after midnight. <laughs> uh, future plans are to obtain a business degree, obtain a real estate license to become a realtor, and ultimately become a general contractor. His favorite verse is Proverbs 19 and 21. Many are the plans of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand out. Something you'd like people to know about you. I still suck my bottom lip to soothe me to sleep. My dad is a genius, and my mom did my homework for me. <laughs> and to faith, cilantro isn't so bad. All right. Give it up for these graduates. Aren't they awesome? We are so proud of them. We do have a slideshow prepared, so enjoy.
an amazing group of graduates. One of the biggest graduating classes I think we've ever had. Over, se I think there's 17 graduates this year. Uh, so this is pretty exciting. Now, every year we give them the option to, if they want to say a few things, to come up here. And uh, every year it seems like that number decreases on who's brave enough to come up and say something. But uh, we do have a few graduates that are going to share some, some words with you tonight. And I think our first up is Miss Lauren Christ. So give it up for Lauren. thought that after 18 years of growing up at this altar, I'd be standing in front of you all just days before graduation. I want to start off by saying thank you all for joining us here to honor each of us graduates as we make our way into the real world. Thank you, Brother Lonnie, for guiding me and teaching me about God's goodness. And thank you for going to all the football games and basketball games with Dad, because honestly, I did not want to at all. <laughs> And Sister Gina, thank you for letting Brother Lonnie go, because I really did not want to go. And Sister Gina, thank you for just being you. You have shown me how to show, like, shed light for God. You have gone through so many hard things, and still you've come out stronger, and you're the strongest person I've ever met. Oh, gosh. Um, you both, along with Faith, have done so much for me that I could never say thank you enough for. Next, I want to thank my family. Dad, you have shown me the true definition of patience. I know most of you have had to hold a random flashlight or tool for your dad, and it never ends up going very well, and I truly can attest to that. <laughs> but Dad, you are my buddy. You drop everything you're doing when I ask you for help or for a favor, and that's what I admire most about you. Now for my mom, you are truly my best friend. You're my role model and you have taught me what it means to be a good Christian woman. You're my car karaoke person and just a light to anyone's day. I hope you know how thankful I am for you because you're always there. You once told me that you would do everything in your power to let me live out my wildest dreams and you have succeeded in that. You are there when I need to rant or cry or just when I need some ice cream. And I know that being a mom isn't easy, but you make it flawless. And while my sister isn't here tonight, I need to give a little shout out to her because if it wasn't for her constant bullying and punching me in the nose for scaring her or teaching me about the real world, I wouldn't be as tough as I am. Now on to the graduates. I saw this verse the other day and I thought I would share. Job 22:28 says, you will succeed in anything you choose to do, and light will shine on the road ahead of you. With that being said, anything you choose to do, make sure you do it for God. And finally, I want to thank all of my friends and church members for being here. I wouldn't be who I am without you, and you all have made such a major impact on my life. God has done so many miraculous things in this place, and I can't wait to see what he continues to do. I'm very excited for this next chapter in my life, and I just hope to make you all proud. Thank you. I'm really tired. Um, I don't know where my mom is, but... Thanks, Mom. Um, thanks, Dad, if you're here, I guess. Um, I didn't plan anything. <laughs> Thank you, Forrest and Tyler, for always being there. The after graduation is like really hitting now. Oh my gosh. I just want to thank Tyler's parents for accepting me so fast. I didn't think that would happen. And I want to thank my recruiter so I can have like some way to pay for my college debt instead of just being a teacher because I know that wouldn't pay for it that well. <laughs> Um, 
Honestly, high school, is, when it started, it was really hard. But now, it just went by so fast. Well, I just want to thank my parents and my whole family, I guess. And the church. And God really helped me too. And I want to thank Faith for being such a good cousin to me. And thank Tyler. I'm done. <laughs> Hey guys, um, I'm going to be very quick because public speaking is my worst fear, but I just had to come up here and say how crazy it is that me and my family just started coming here four years ago, and I can say that I know most everyone's name in here and face, and that each and every person is so kind. Um, every time I come, even if I'm in a bad mood, or if I'm stressed out, or if I'm on top of the world, Every person in here always has a smile on their face and is always saying hi and is so kind. So there's a few thank yous that I wanted to give. First, to Mr. Jeff Powell for all the days off of school. <laughs> um, a huge thank you to my mom because she is my biggest role model and she shows me exactly how, like what a strong woman is and exactly how I need to be educated and smart and She's my favorite person in the world. Um, a thank you to my brother Storm because he is there for any question about school that I ever have. Um, I almost dropped my math class the other day, but I didn't because Storm gives me advice. Um, I also just have to thank all of my friends because, like I said, each and every person here is so welcoming and kind, and this has been the easiest place to make friends. Um, and yeah, just like Ava said, high school has went by so fast. And I'm very sad to move away, but don't worry, I'll be coming home all the time because I get homesick really easily, so thank you. <laughs> so I actually wasn't given much of a choice to be up here. Ashley told my friend, uh, he asked me if we were required to give a speech, and I told him we were, because I was in, under the impression we were, but I told mom about it later, and she told me, she said, no, you're not required to, but you are. <laughs> so, needless to say, I didn't start even thinking about what to put down until about an hour ago, and here we are. Let's see. First off, I'd like to thank all my supporters, everyone who came out tonight, and even those who can't be with us, for whatever the reason may be. There have been many mentors and influences in my life, and even though I might not be very old, I know there's some people in there that I like that, but I can say I've come very, a very long way. In fact, I was actually thinking about it the other day, and I told Mom, I said, Mom, I must have stressed you out a lot. I said, if I have a kid like me, I'll probably be gray-headed by 30. <laughs> Anyways... Sorry, Mom. <laughs> but Parker, thank you for me, my wingman, my partner in crime. Believe it or not, I do feel bad about getting, in you, getting you in so much trouble. And Hadley, I think we fought way more than we have anything else. But nonetheless, thank you for, for reminding me that there's always someone looking up to me. And I know I'm not the best example, but thank you anyways. Love you, girl. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Mom and Dad, thank you for sticking with me every step of the way for being my biggest supporters and ha having my back no matter the circumstances. Even if there's, any, if there's anything I've come to realize, it's that just because you're both hard on me and scold me, it's not because you don't love me, it's quite the opposite. To wrap it up, I figured the best way would be a cringy inspirational quote from somebody. But as I was going over my speech, I kind of had this first come to mind. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See that I am doing a new thing. So although it is okay to remember your past and where you come from, you cannot forget that there is a future that you are to be a part of. Thank you, everybody.
Well, hello. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to give all credit to God because, you know, he's, he's the best. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to give credit to my mom and uh, sister. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, thanks to all the family for being here tonight. Um, like to give credit to Pastor and Gigi for being the best leaders and leading this church in a good direction. Um, and to Faith, you know, she's, she's the best youth pastor. Um, you know, so, sometimes, you know, she'll get you out of your comfort zone, but, you know, it's always for the better. Um, <laughs> uh, I got to give credit to Hunter and John and all of them for, you know, I haven't known them for long, but they're, they're like the best friends ever. They, they give you all the support, and they've done a lot for me, and they're just good. Uh, I got to give credit to Jack back there. You know, you may never see him, but, you know, um, like n none of this would be running without um, what we do back there. Um, thanks to his uh, mom and the secretary, uh, Sister Laura, and all of this family, you know, I wasn't going to, I didn't plan on serving or doing anything. I just plan on just coming to church and doing what I always do, but, you know, um, she told me Jack needed help, and, you know, I just decided to do it, and I'm glad I did. I've been doing it for three years now. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made, um, just doing that. Um, so, yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, so just uh, always trust in God and always uh, pursue the Spirit and uh, have godly friends and reach the world to, um, the best you can um, with the anointing of God. Um, and yeah, just pursue God in everything you do and everything else will fall into place. Thank you. I'll be honest, I don't have anything prepared, so I'm just going to wing it. Uh, I'd like to thank my family for always being there to love and support me for everything I do and help me figure out what I want to do in my life. I'd like to thank Ethan and Forrest for being the first two people I ever talked to when I moved out here. Super nervous. They both made it extremely easy. I'd like to thank my beautiful girlfriend, Ava, for loving and supporting me in everything, everything I do for the past four years now. I'd like to thank Bubba Price for helping me decide what I'm going to be doing for the next eight years of my life. <laughs> and, and I'd like to, uh, they're not here, but I'd like to say thank you to all the friends that I left at Ash because I still talk to them just about every single day and I make plans with them without their consent. But that's okay because they love me, I hope. And yeah. Thank you. When I graduate the next time, I'm going to have a full beard like half of these dudes right here. <laughs> One of these days, I won't be able to grow a full beard. <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I graduated high school, I looked about 12. <laughs> I only look 16 now, but I'm working on it. Oh, goodness. Um, I got to do the backyard at Tioga this year, and it was an honor to be called to do that. And... Um, going on my 40th year out of school. So, uh, yeah, I, I know I'm not supposed to spell all these things, but, but I just every year I'm overwhelmed at the incredible young people that come out of this church 
This is a phenomenal yeah. group of young people right here with miles of accomplishments. <laughs> and knowing the background of, of, of almost all of these, knowing where they came from, how they arrived at where they are, and some of the things they've overcome to get to this point are just phenomenal, magnificent. Uh, every time, it's, I'm just amazed by each of you, and I'm, I'm so proud of you, so thankful that you have called this your church. And many of you, you may not recognize a lot of these young people because a lot of these young people attend mostly on Wednesday night in our youth service. And so it's an honor to know that kids want to come to this campus and be here and call us their church while they are going through those four years that fly by so fast, but, but uh, so very, very foundation of their life. And they launch from here, and I'm excited to see where God's going to take them. And I believe we are going to see. We've got, we've got guys that's going to be doctors. Ladies are going to be doctors. We're going to see great things out of this class. And I give them one more uh, warm applause for that. Amen. So a year and a half ago, our life turned upside down. Uh, we had never, no idea we would be standing here. But one of the ways that we had been able to honor our grandson, who, who passed from here, was such a great and vital part of this church. He was part of the Junior Dream Team. He was part of the involvement of this place. And he loved this campus tremendously. And so we have decided every year to give a scholarship in his name. And I want to say thank you to Matt and to the team. Where are you at, Matt? Are you are back there in the back. Thank you, Matt, for doing what you do. Um, right after he passed, they decided to do a uh, benefit uh, cornhole tournament and raise funds, and they wanted to know what we needed to do with them. And so we decided that what we're going to do is every year as we raise these funds, as these come in, we're going to give a scholarship away in Brendan's name every year. This year was rather difficult. There were some very, very qualified young people that placed their name in here. And I'm just thankful, and I know that I would love to be able to give all of you this scholarship. I promise you that. Uh, because uh, many of you were connected with him in so many ways. And I know as we get closer to his, to his class, it'll even be more that uh, just had close connections to him. But this year, uh, we're going to give this scholarship to someone who... Uh, has come to this campus, and uh, been, it's been not an easy road for them. It's been a rather difficult road and a hard place. But they have uh, walked onto this campus and chosen not to just attend here, but to be a vital, vital part of our dream team that's here that serves. And so without further ado, I want to welcome to this place today to receive the Brendan Wiedner Scholarship Fund. Josh, come on up here. Thank you, guys. Don't you love the awkward walk up when you have to watch me walk up? Hey, y'all give this class another hand. I feel like y'all need to wake up again, and they need to be celebrated as much as we possibly can. I want to start off by saying to all of you, uh, I'm extremely proud of y'all. I mean that uh, because I don't feel qualified after reading what all of y'all aspire to do to be up here. I was like, I'm a graphic designer. And let me just read off. I'm just going to read it off some of the ones that I was reading because it's, it's crazy, okay? So we've got uh, future dentists, architects, business owners, pilots, Artists, nurses, psychologists, radiologists, teachers, soldiers, realtors. It's just a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so y'all give them a big hand because this is incredible. Incredible. 
group of people, um, I want to remind y'all, when you get famous, remember who I was, okay? Remember me. Also, remember where you give tithes. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to need it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, y'all are awesome. Um, I love y'all. I always say I'm not going to take long, and then I do. That's what I've, that's what I've been told. Um, don't clap, Zion. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you that I'm going to take a long time. That way, when I only take 10 minutes, y'all are floored. Like, she, she did it. Uh, but let's get right to it. Um, I, I wanted to make my, my message to you guys something that was very short and sweet, but also something that you would take away from tonight. Um, because here's what I know about being a graduate and sitting in that seat, is that every single one of you are in that place where you're in what I call the valley of decision. It's like, I've got a million choices in front of me. What do I do? Where do I go? What does life look like now? And while you have plans, I know it's very hard sometimes when you're looking at some of these things in front of you to make the best decision. And there's no possible way that I could go to every single one of you and tell you what the best decision is. So my goal today is just to guide the decisions and say, this is the choice that you make based on these things. And so I want to read a scripture uh, with this. You're probably very familiar with it, but... This is what I felt like God was telling me for you guys tonight. Mark 8, 34 through 37, it says this. And he summoned the crowd together with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a person to gain the whole world, but to forfeit his soul. For what could a person give in exchange for his soul? For his soul. So in church, conversations you tend to hear a lot uh, tend to talk about stuff like heaven or hell issues. Raise your hand. You ever heard something like that said? Is this a heaven or hell issue? If you haven't, you haven't been in church long enough because you're going to hear it, okay? Is this a heaven or hell issue? Uh, this is something that we, we normally... We talk about a lot of the decisions that we make. Is this a heaven or hell issue? Is this thing going to send me to hell? Is this thing going to get me into heaven? And you hear that. You hear those two, those two things always in comparison a lot, which is kind of funny, and I'll explain why. Uh, but the fight in our conversation has been between them. Uh, I hear it said a lot, we don't preach about hell enough, and I'm not going to preach hell today, okay? Leave that pastor for Sunday, Pentecostal. No, I'm just kidding. And I get that line of thought, okay? But what tends to happen is we view everything from this lens of heaven or hell, and we miss something very important when we do that. Because here's the thing for us, and if you don't hear anything else, this is what I want you to know. The test will never be between heaven or hell. Did you choose heaven over hell? Okay, because let me tell you why. That's a no-brainer, all right? Raise your hand if you want to burn a lake of fire and have your eternal soul. Just dead. Has any, does anybody in here want to volunteer? Versus streets of gold and living eternal life. It's a no-brainer, right? We don't, we don't choose heaven over hell. It's a no-brainer. The test will always be, did you choose heaven over earth? Did you choose heaven over earth? I'm not concerned with hellfire catching my feet. I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned, are we choosing heaven over earth? Are we choosing eternity over this present life. And that's the reason why Jesus was speaking this to his disciples, is that in this life, it can become very easy to shift our eyes from the eternal life that we aren't in just yet because the temporary one that we're living in is just so busy, so consumed with getting successful and becoming something that if we're not careful, we'll miss out on the thing that is most important, and that is heaven. And this is the struggle that every single person on earth faces is that we get so consumed with the present life surrounding us that sometimes we miss what's the most important. That is not life here, but it is life there. And what we have to do is learn how to live here on this earth with heaven in mind. Living on the earth with heaven in mind. So why this message? Why are you preaching this faith to a bunch of graduates? Because all of you are in the valley of decision that which door should I go through place and what's the best option for me to take. And I want this message to serve as a reminder to you that whatever decision you make, make it with heaven in mind. 
Whatever decision that you make, make it with heaven in mind. And so I want to speak to you about investing into eternity. So when Jesus was speaking to his disciples in that opening text, he was using financial terms. You've heard the word profit before, right? Hopefully, like you passed out of college or high school, you've heard that word. He said, what profits a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? His own soul. And here's something you understand in the financial world. I'm not a financial expert, so I'm not going to give you investing tips. Y'all might want to go see. I think Toby Brazel does that. That's not me, okay? But I do have a few insights on this. <clears throat> here's something you have to understand. You can't make a profit on something if you don't first invest. You cannot make a profit if you first do not invest. I learned this lesson early on, me and my sister. We did what all young entrepreneurs do. We got, a, we got an idea. We want to make some money. And so we started selling lemonade, okay? We walked up to our mom. We're like, we want to do this. We want to sell lemonade. And April Gintz, being the tough love that she is, looked at us and said, you want to sell lemonade, you're going to have to buy lemonade with your money because I'm not buying lemonade for you. And I'm pretty sure it was still her money because we went around the house and we scrounged up like $2, right? It wasn't our money, so it was... But it was, we gained it, right? We were the ones that found it. $2. And we went to the store. I remember going to Super One, and we got that big old can of Country Time Lemonade. Anybody? Y'all, I see y'all. It's good. It's still good. I'm not hating on it. Okay, $2. <laughs> Made us a whole bunch of cups of lemonade. And here's what you know. You sell a cup of lemonade for a dollar, three cups in, we've already made a profit, baby. It was already good. Already good. <laughs> but here's the lesson that I learned, thank you, April Gantz, is that if you want to make a profit, you first have to invest. You first have to invest. If you want to make a good profit, you have to make good investments. And so this isn't a finance class, and I'm no expert, but it's not a good investment to invest in something that will not last or that will not profit you in the long run. It is not a good idea to invest in something that will not profit you or that will not last in the long run. So let's keep that thought and let's look at it through the lens of heaven. Where do we invest? Hebrews 1, 10 through 12, this is an awesome passage of Scripture. And it, it talks about perfectly why we do not invest here. It says this, And you, Lord, in the beginning, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands, but yet they will perish. But you will remain, and they all will wear out like a garment. And like a robe, you will roll them up. Like a garment, they will also be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. This passage is so good because it lets us know that, yes, the earth is beautiful. Now, Ball, Louisiana, like, let's look outside. You know what I'm saying? Let's, you know, think Tennessee. The earth is beautiful. The earth is beautiful. I'm just kidding. The ball track is amazing, guys. Ball foods is beautiful. We got beautiful architecture. <laughs> this earth is so beautiful. When you begin to look at the beauty of the earth, when you begin to see all of the things that are built, you begin to understand why sometimes we can get caught up here because it is beautiful. But what the, the author in Hebrews tells us is that all of these things, all of these beautiful things, none of them will last. Everything that we see, everything on this earth, everything in this temporary life, if you can put your hand on it, you can see it. It's not going to last. It will not last. So when we live our lives in such a way that only benefits our life here on earth and we forsake the thing that is going to last forever and that is our soul, then we make a bad investment. When we only invest in the things here and never make an investment that goes beyond this place and only focus on what's here, we make a bad investment. And that's why Jesus says in Matthew 6, 19 through 21, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin they do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The good investments are the ones that store up treasures in heaven. The good decision to make is the one that prioritizes heaven over everything else. So when you're looking at a decision and you've got options on the table and there, there are things in front of you that what, deci what decision should I make? Make the one that prioritizes heaven. Make the one that you can prioritize your soul in. Am I going to be able to get a, connected to a church there? 
Am I going to be able to find a group of people to go settle down? Am I going to be able to stay connected with God and stay connected with people where I go? Because if not, then it's not a good decision. Because we have to prioritize heaven over everything else. So how do we invest into eternity? How do we store up treasures in heaven? We must come to understand and believe this. Every decision we make is an investment into something. Literally every single decision that you make. Everywhere that we decide to spend our time, every place we decide to use our talents, every relationship we invest into, everything we say and do, it's an investment into something. I feel like graduates are actually able to understand this concept more than most. And I'm going to tell you why. Let me give you an example because this has happened to me before. But you spend your time the week before the test, that big test, studying for the test, and you invest in a higher grade for yourself, right? Maybe. It depends on how well you understand it. But you spend your time the week before binge-watching Netflix instead, and guess what? You've still invested into something. It's just a worthless investment because you flunked the test, which is the whole point of being in the class, and now you have significantly more knowledge on what happened in season four of Grey's Anatomy. That's what you have. So it's always an investment. It's just an investment into somewhere. And so we have to be very particular with where we put our investments, where we spend our time, where we use our talents, where we, where we invest our relationships, because every single thing that we do is an investment. So we've got to make sure that our decisions and the things that we do, they are investments into an eternal life. And so when it comes to answering the question, what do we invest, Jesus gives us an amazing parable. I'm not going to read the parable for the sake of time, but I'm sure that you've all heard it. But if you haven't, I'm going to summarize it. It's the parable of the ten talents. A master comes to the people and he says, okay, to you, you I'm going to give five, but to you I'm going to give two and to the other I'm going to give one. And now what I want you to do is I want you to turn around. I want you to do something with the talent that I've given you. Now talent is money, not talent and ability like Poppin can play the piano, but this isn't the same talent, right? Just context for anybody that doesn't know. He looks at him, he says, I want you to turn this into something. Do something with this thing. And when he comes back, he asks the servant, what did you do with what I gave you? To the first one that had five, he turned it around, he doubled the thing. To the one who had two, he did the same exact thing, he had doubled it. But to the one who had one, he had buried his talent did absolutely nothing with it. And when he looked at that servant, he said, you slothful and wicked servant, why would you do that? But to the other ones, he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've done good with just a few things and I'll make you ruler over many. And so we understand what Jesus meant is that what you do with what you have is always an investment and what he gives you, you've got to be diligent and steward that talent, steward that ability, steward that relationship, steward those things as to invest into your eternity over everything else. Because the only question he's going to want you to answer at the end of your life is what did you do with what you were given? What did you do with it? Some of you were, were dealt different hands. Some of you don't have the same playing field. Some of you didn't have rich families. Some of you might come from that. Some of you do have those things. What did you do with what you were given? What did you do with what I gave you? Every single one of us has, given, has been given some kind of talent, ability, gift, time, or money. How are you going and where are you going to invest the resources that you were given by God? And what I want to make sure that we do in this life is not to look at your life like, woe is me, I don't have enough, I don't have a lot, I don't have these things that other people have. No, you have something. God gave you something. Whatever that looks like. You might not be the top of the class. You might not be the storm boyettes that are the smartest guy in every room, okay? You might not be the person that's on the Aon roll, but are you somebody who has a talent somewhere else? Are you somebody who has another ability in some other place? Are you somebody who knows how to build relationships? Are you, whatever you have, what are you going to do with that? It's not about focusing on anybody else's but yours. And that's another thing that I want to take note of in this parable is that you will only be judged based on what you were given. The man with the five was judged on his five. God didn't expect the one to turn it into another five. And to have more than the one with five, he just wanted the five to do with what he had. The same with the two, do with what you have. And the one, all he had to do, he was only judged based on his one. 
And in the same way, God will only judge you based on what you have. There's no point in comparison here. There's no point in looking at somebody else's life and saying, why can't I have that or why don't I have that? It's just what can I give with what I do have? Oftentimes in the church, I hear a lot of people say, you're going to stand beside Paul one day and have to be judged. No, I'm not. Y'all stand there. I'm going to be on my own, okay? <laughs> Let Paul be Paul. Faith's going to be faith, okay? <laughs> That's all we're doing. <laughs> it's not biblical either. Because here's the deal. Paul's going to be called to be a martyr. If you're called to be a martyr for the gospel, go be a martyr for the gospel. But maybe, just maybe, that's not what you're called to do. Maybe God just called you to be diligent wherever you're at. And saying, you're going to go be a realtor, go be a realtor for the glory of God. If you're going to go do, go be a teacher, go be a teacher for the glory of God. If you're going to go be a psychologist, go be a psychologist for the glory of God. We're not judged based on anything else. But what did you do with what you were given? And there's a tendency in messages like this when I talk about eternity and making sure that your life is consumed with eternal thought to think that I'm saying that all of you have to drop what you're doing and come be in full-time ministry. And I'm telling you, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. First of all, we can't take on full-time ministers here, okay? I don't know if we can get along like that. I don't, no, I'm just kidding. But that's not what the calling is for any of us. It isn't taking everything that you've done so far and giving it all up because not everyone is called into that. No, some of you will still call, be called to be dentists or to be realtors, to be clinical psychologists, to be soldiers, to be architects, to be teachers. But when it comes to choosing what you're going to do, how you're going to live, I want you to continue to pursue those goals. But make sure that as you pursue those things, you are continuing to prioritize eternity in everything that you do. Continuing to prioritize eternity. Brother Jeff taught this one time, and I think about it all the time. Uh, when it comes to the Great Commission, Jesus looked at his disciples right before he left, and he said, you go and make disciples of all the nations. That's what he told them. But actually, the text insinuates that it's saying, as you go, make disciples of the nations. So what does that mean for us? Is that as you go on your way, doing whatever God has called you to do, Continue to do those things, but as you go, as you go be the teacher, as you go be those things, go do those things, but be and make a disciple as you do it. It's a mindset shift, and it's nothing more than that. It's saying this eternity that I've, I've kind of put on the back burner now, it's not a compartmentalized part of my mind. It's everything to me. It's not something that I think about in the back and I, I bring it up every once in a while when I'm at church. No, but every decision that I make flows from that thought process that my eternity is at stake and I've got to prioritize that everywhere I go. And if it does not invest into my eternity or somebody else's eternity, then it might not be worth the investment overall. It's just a mindset shift and that's all it is. And I love that God has a way of taking what you do and turning it for his glory if you commit it to him. It's such a beautiful thing when he called some of the disciples that were fishermen. He looked at them and he said, no, come follow after me. I'll make you fishers of men. And there's something so profound in that, and that is that God knows how to take what you're going to do if you commit it to him and use it to go reach other people. He knows what you're going to go do. He knows what you're going to go invest in. Continue to do that thing, but allow God to turn it into something that can reach people and something that can get you and, and your family and everybody else that you know into eternity with you. So whatever you have set out to do, continue to pursue that thing. Just make heaven a priority in your life. And there will be a time when multiple decisions come up for you. Choose the one that prioritizes heaven. For those of you who are going away to college, and I want, I hate that. Okay, I just want to say that. Josh is going to ULL. What? Come on, bro. Uh, I'll go fight the whole school. I'm done. Uh, but for those of you who must leave, Ball, Louisiana, and those of you that are going away to college, listen to me. Prioritize heaven. You go to college, it's not a second, secondary decision of where can I find a church and where can I get plugged in. No, make heaven a priority. Because if it's not a made-up mind when you walk down there or walk up there, wherever you're going, if it's not a made-up mindset now, it won't be a made-up mindset then. Eternity has to be on your mind everywhere. And so as you go, as you go, 
as you go to those schools, and I feel like God has called you to those different places. Maybe it's that you're going into the guard after this. I, whatever you're going to do, make heaven the priority. And when it comes to making a choice, if there's no way that you can sustain a relationship with God and pursue that thing, then do not pursue that thing because heaven's always the priority. Heaven is always the priority. There are going to be times sometimes where you have to make a decision that does not make sense to temporary-minded people. There's going to be a time sometimes maybe where there's something on the table where you can make more money or you can do something more, but for some reason it compromises your eternity or it compromises your relationship with God. I'm telling you, I know it won't make sense to some people, but you have to prioritize that thing because what profits a man to gain the whole wide world but lose his own soul? What would profit you if you went somewhere but you lost your relationship with God? What would profit you if you walked away with a college degree but at the same time you lost everything that you had? What would profit you if you left this place and you went into wherever you're going, the guard or into your job, if you got all of this money or you did all of these things but yet you lost your soul? That's why Jesus asked the question, what shall you give in exchange for your soul? What is the thing that you would, you would deem more valuable than your eternal life after this? There's nothing. So we have to make it a priority always. I say this, and I'm fixing to come to a close, but you can tell if someone truly believes there is an eternity by the way that they live their lives. Somebody that truly believes there's an eternity lives like there's an eternity after this. Somebody that believes there's eternity lives with everything and every purpose in their life with the geared up mindset that there's something else after this. Someone can profess to believe that there's an eternity and I hope all of you do profess that. Hope if you're sitting here that, that you are convinced that there's something after this. But someone can profess it. But does eternity affect how you live your life on earth? That's the real question. Eternity was never meant to be something that was on the back burner, but it is the framework from which every single decision that we make flows from. Our relationship with God is not something that is compartmentalized. It is meant to be everything to us. It's not meant to be something that I think about on a Sunday or on a Wednesday, but it's meant to be the thing that I pursue daily. Eternity is the framework from which everything that I do in my life is viewed and nothing less. We won't be judged by what we profess to believe. And I want to say that again. You will not be judged for what you profess to believe. So did you say you were a Christian? That's cute. What did you do with what you profess to believe? If we say that we are Christians, what did you do with what you profess to believe? Is Christian just something you say because you think that that's the thing that you need to say or is that something that affects everything about you because it should? You will not be judged based on that, but understand it's the weight of your life, the things that you do, the things and the actions that you take. That's the thing. That's the thing that's going to get you there. If you profess to believe in it, make sure that your life looks like you believe that there's an eternity in every decision that you make. And I'm going to uh, give a quote by John Bevere, and then I'm going to turn it over to Pastor to pray over you guys. But it says this, To fear the Lord is to honor, esteem, value, respect, and reverence Him above anything or anyone else. It is to love what He loves and hate what He hates. What is important to Him is important to us. What's not important to Him is not important to us. When we fear Him, we will tremble at His word, which means we obey Him instantly. When it doesn't make sense, when it hurts, when we don't see the benefits right away, we will obey to completion. We will obey to completion. And that's my last word for you. I'm going to call pastor up here to pray. And my last word for you guys is that every decision that you make, remember that that investment is above everything else. And I can give you advice on maybe where to go and what to do here in this present life, but I'm going to tell you this. If it compromises that, then it's not worth it because that is the most important thing. And I love you guys. I'm proud of you all. Thank you all for letting me speak to you. I'm going to turn it over to pastor. Would you guys stand? Graduates, would you stand? You can remain seated, except for them. I'm going to pray over them. Mm -hmm. um, you just heard an incredible and passionate word from somebody that from an early age made that decision. And she has poured her life into her education 
and into the kingdom of God. And we are blessed at this church to have such a next-gen leader to stand on your, one of your best days and not just say, rah, 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 we're ready for you to go, but to look you eyeball to eyeball and tell you it's important. Because let me tell you, when you leave here tonight, many of you are already 18 years old, you're adults, you're moving off to go into big places. Nobody's going to be there to make you do anything. It's going to be what is inside of you, whether you desire to live for God, serve God, work for the kingdom of God, that will be up to you and you alone. And so when you leave here, I am praying that God has his hand on you. Every one of you are called and given talents and abilities. Go use them for the kingdom of God. Go use them in this earth. Go, go use them for your benefit. Go use them to bless others, but also use them with one thing in mind. I am a servant of the kingdom of God, and God's going to give me eternal blessings when I have served him in this life. Let me pray over you tonight. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. God, I know that each of these have worked so hard. They have given themselves over to the education of their, of their life, and now they go to pursue other things. Some of them will leave high school and enter into the realm of the college and, and uh, soldiers and pilots and all of these uh, endeavors that they have chosen. And I pray that your hand would be upon them, and I pray that they would never forget the word that they have heard tonight. Every day of their life from this day forward, they must choose eternity or earth. We'll decide. But I pray, God, that you would walk with them. And, Lord, that the seeds that have been implanted in their life and the the Sunday school lessons and the Wednesday night youth services and the youth retreats and the times they've spent with you and the youth camps where you so impacted and empowered their lives, that, God, they would not soon forget those days, but they would carry them into this next stage of life. Those that are leaving college, many of them going on to pursue even higher degrees, some pursuing uh, a career now. I pray your hand upon them that wherever they go and whatever they do, that you would lead and guide and order every step of their way. And Lord, we just put this all in your hands tonight. And I just believe, God, this will be a class that will soar above many because they are going to go forth and do as they have been challenged to do to live their life with eternal purpose, not just an earthly purpose. And I believe, God, your hand will be on them from this day forward. And we honor you for that. And we ask you, Lord, to to anoint them, to strengthen them, be with them. In Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. 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 I know y'all don't need me to turn y'all's tassels or whatever, but just y'all can turn them over since we're going to let you go out of here. If you want to throw your hat in the air, I don't know what you want to do. But let's give this group a a round of applause. If you would be so kind tonight, they're fixing to exit out of here to a great, great standing ovation. But we would love for you to join them in the back. They have each uh, decorated a table with some of their accomplishments over the high school and college years. And there's some refreshments and the time to meet them and greet them. And uh, let's, let's just uh, stand and give them one more hand clap of, of uh, applause tonight as we see them exited out of here. God bless you. You're the greatest group. Yeah, they deserve that. The Jeff Powell, thank you. We appreciate you very much. Our great leader in our community, man, doing a great job leading our schools, raising the bar. We're thankful for that. His brother Jimmy Sautel here tonight as well. Brother Jimmy, thank you for what you do. He takes a, a load off our community by taking young people. He's the chancellor at CLTCC, and I honor you tonight men that have uh, given their self to the education of our kids. How many teachers we got in the house tonight? Where you at, teachers? Let's give all our teachers a hand. Come on. Amen. We were blessed. Have a house full of teachers.